Hello and welcome to AzureMonk.com. In this video, we'll explain and simplify how scaling works in the context of an Azure Kubernetes cluster in plain English. Secret Recipes was an organization who was delivering food to local residents. Due to the pandemic, they had to start taking a lot more online orders than they traditionally do. To accommodate this, the CTO decided to host the following microservices in an Azure Kubernetes services cluster. These microservices were deployed as deployments in the AKS cluster. The front-end menu deployment currently had three pods running and it was chugging along just fine until they announced a new secret recipe, dashing veggies, which became an overnight success. Suddenly, everyone in the city wanted the dashing veggies item and everyone went to log in to the menu page. But the CPU spiked up and the services started to choke and were not able to scale quickly to meet the demands. The CEO then asked the CTO, wait a minute, why isn't the infrastructure scaling as we need? Isn't this the whole point of the cloud containers and elastic compute? Well, yes, but there are a few things we had to configure and consider in order to have this. Let's first break down the different kind of mechanisms for scaling that are available with AKS. First, we have the good old manual method of scaling a pod. Let's say you originally had three pods as part of the deployment and you now anticipate that the load is going to be higher than normal over the weekend. You would then run the following command, kubectl scale deployment with your deployment name and the number of replicas you need to scale it to. In this case, let's say five. Lo and behold, AKS scales the deployment for you. And once the weekend is over and you want to scale it back to avoid overcharges, you scale it back down using the same command. This works, but obviously the limitation to this method is that this is manual and not the cloudy way to do things. What if there was a way to actually scale the pods out or in? as in create more pods when the demand increases and automatically reduce the pod count when the demand decreases based off a metric. I'm glad you asked. There's a way to accomplish just this using the horizontal pod autoscaler. Horizontal pod autoscaler works for all Kubernetes clusters above version 1.8 or higher if they have the metric server installed. And the metric server is automatically installed in all AKS clusters in version 1.10 or higher. The metric server is a component which provides the resource utilization metrics. The horizontal pod autoscaler uses this in order to make a decision to scale out or scale in. But before we even start using the horizontal pod autoscaler, it's mandatory that we define resource requests and resource limits on the containers for the deployment. Don't worry if you're not familiar with resource requests and resource limit. I'll cover that in a short video next. But for now, let's understand that this is deployed as part of the deployment under the container spec and specifies how much CPU or memory is required for the container and what's the max limit the pod can consume from a CPU and memory standpoint. In this case, we have defined the CPU request as 250 milli CPU and CPU limit as 500 milli CPU units. Great. In order for the deployment to now enable auto scale, we run the following commands kubectl autoscale deployment. What this effectively means is that when the average CPU utilization across all the pods exceed 50% of their requested usage, that is the CPU requested in the YAML, if you remember, the autoscaler increases the number of pods up to a maximum of 10. And there always needs to be a minimum of three pods running all the time. We see that the current number of pods is still three in this case. I'm now going to send the load to these pods to see how the autoscaler reacts. For this, I'll have a busy box container performing a curl command. As you can see, as and when the CPU load increases, the pod count gradually increases too. Now, let me go ahead and stop the load test to reduce the CPU load. Hmm, but if you notice, the scale down is taking much longer, right? Well, this is by design. 
The horizontal pod autoscaler checks the metric API every 30 seconds and sometimes this can cause the previous scale events not to have completed before the next check and could cause race conditions. In order to avoid this, there is a delay of 5 minutes for a scale down event that has reduced the number of pods. This is set to 5 minutes as default and as of now, this is not configurable. Great. But let's say the number of pods exceed the total available CPU in all of the available nodes in the cluster. Then what? This brings us to the next option of scaling the nodes themselves. Once again, we have the good old manual way to scale a node in a cluster using the following command. AZ AKS scale with the resource group, AKS cluster name and the node count, the number of nodes that we want to scale it to and the node pool name. And if it's a user node pool, you can also scale it to zero if needed. Remember, you can only do this with a user node pool and not a system node pool. Watch out for the upcoming video on the differences between a system node pool and a user node pool. But like in the case of pods, when we are building a distributed system, doing something manually is never our friend. In order to automate this, we have cluster autoscaler which also reads from the metrics API every 10 seconds and metric API works on all AKS clusters above version 1.10. When the cluster autoscaler identifies that a new pod needs to be scheduled but is not able to due to resource constraints, it automatically adds a new node to the existing node pool to provide the compute necessary. As soon as the node becomes available, the pod gets scheduled on these nodes. Now, how do we configure this? This can get confusing sometimes. Although the AKS nodes themselves use a virtual machine scale set, do not modify the setting or configuration directly from the portal. Let the cluster autoscaler do that for you. So how do you do that on an existing cluster? We run the following command, az aks update, the cluster name resource group and then with the switch enable cluster autoscaler. We provide the minimum count and the maximum count. Great. Now that we have cluster autoscaler enabled, I'm going to simulate load by requesting for 50 replicas, which I know my three existing nodes will not be able to accommodate. I'll give it a few minutes and I can see the nodes autoscaling. I can see the status of the cluster autoscaler by checking the output of this config map. Give it a few minutes, we can now see that the nodes have been autoscaled. So let's go ahead and reduce the replica count to just three, like it was originally. And we can now see that the cluster autoscaler automatically downsizes. Once again, we see that the scale in takes longer than the scale out operation. The scale in happens after 10 minutes after it recognizes the nodes are no longer needed. But remember, when this happens, the pods existing on that node gets rescheduled to another node. And this may cause disruption if your deployment just has only one pod. Also, the scale-in of the cluster will not happen if the pod was created manually as a pod without a replica set or deployment and certain other criteria. But do note that to add a new VM to a node pool, it takes a few minutes. And if your application needs to burst super quick, it can leverage Azure container instances and virtual nodes. We'll cover this in depth in a separate video. So to recap, we can scale an AKS cluster both manually and automatically for both the pods and the nodes. For the pods to auto scale, we use horizontal pod autoscaler. And for the cluster to autoscale, we use the cluster autoscaler. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.